As we mentioned at the conclusion of last lecture, we need to introduce one more Taylor series. It's called the binomial series. Suppose you have the function 1 plus x to the power k. Now, if k is an integer like 3 or 4, this is just a finite polynomial that is easy to handle, so we don't need to do series for that. But let's say if k was not an integer, if k was just a power one third, meaning the cube root or two fifths or something like that, how would we calculate that, right? And we, as we mentioned in the Taylor polynomial lecture, we don't know how to do these roots by hand, so we need series or Taylor polynomials to be able to approximate this to a given degree of accuracy. So we'll come back to this. This is the conclusion. Let's start with this. So you have f of x equals 1 plus x to the power k. We want to develop k is not an integer. We want to develop the Maclaurin series for this f of x at x equals 0 or c equals 0. What happens is y is c equals 0 because when c is equal to 0, this is 1 to the power k, which is always 1. It's easy to calculate. So now what is the first derivative? First derivative is k times 1 plus x. Second derivative is k times k minus 1. Uh, sorry, this is k minus 1, right? The power decreased. You will remember that the general polynomial rule of differentiation says always deduct 1 from the power, even if the power is not an integer. k times k minus 1 times 1 plus x to the power k minus 2. And goes on so forth, so forth, so on and so forth. The nth derivative will turn out to be, so let's look at it. The first derivative was k minus 0 or k. Second derivative stopped at 1. So it will be k times k minus 1 times k minus 2 and so on times k minus n plus 1 x plus 1 to the power what? second is k minus 2 so this will be k minus n ok so these are all the, the, the these are the derivatives this is how the answer to looks like now if you plug them at 0 right what happens f of 0 is just uh, 1. f of uh, f prime of 0 is just k. Right? I'm plugging 0 everywhere here, 0 for the axis, so I just get k. f second prime of 0 is k times k minus 1. So I end up getting all this, uh, the, 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 the constant term in front of this thing, right? And so on and so forth. So using these coefficients in the Taylor template, right? You have 1 plus k times x, this is Maclaurin series, so it's x minus 0 is x. Then k times k minus 1 over 2 factorial x square, k times k minus 1, k minus 2 over 3 factorial x cube, and so on and so forth. Now, you can actually use the ratio test to see that this series actually converges, and it converges in, in the interval negative 1 to 1. Okay, converges. The radius is 1. You can check the, do the ratio test yourself and you, you, you will be able to see that. Uh, however, that by itself doesn't show you that it converges necessarily to this guy, right? For that, you have to use the error theorem. So you have to look at the n plus 1 error and see that that guy indeed goes to 0 as n goes to infinity. So I'm not going to do that. You can do that on your own. Uh, but what I'll do right now is an example, right? So let's say example, find Maclaurin series for f of x equals the cube root of 1 plus x. Okay? So cube root of 1 plus x, you can write it as, you know, this is working with this thing, it's 1 plus x to the power one third, right? So by using this result, what do you get? You get one plus x to the power one third equals one plus k is one third, one third x plus one third times one third minus one, which is negative two thirds. So that's going to give you negative two over three squared, and you also have the two factorial x square, right, then plus you have one third times one third minus one is negative two thirds, 
One third minus two is negative five thirds. Then you still have one over three factorial and x cubed, and so on. Okay. So this is very nice. I mean, the, the, this is very nice. Why? Because uh, once we know the binomial series, then we can compute cube roots and seventh roots and two over seventh powers and things like that by very simple polynomial type, uh, polynomial type things. And to get to within, we, we will not be able to value the infinite series, of course. What we will do is, for a desired degree of accuracy, we will stop at some place, x cube by x to the 4 and evaluate here. Okay? So, this is an example of the binomial series. Now, with this binomial series, you have a whole bunch of tools at your disposal. You should look at the last two pages of section 9.10. There's a table of different common functions for which Taylor series we have more or less derived in different sections. So you have those Taylor series, you can keep them in your mind. And then using compositions, addition, subtraction, differentiation, integration, multiplication, division, you can develop the Taylor series for other functions. Okay? So that concludes our discussion for 9.10. Uh, read the examples in the last two pages of section 9.10 and we will do 9.11.